These graphs are intended to describe uh, a particle as it encounters a wave. And this particle is moving in simple harmonic motion. And that's why I've used sinusoidal functions. Notice I've drawn one sine curve and one cosine curve, and I've kind of written who cares which. They really would be the same wave, just uh, shifted 90 degrees. So we can use uh, this model to describe uh, the, the electric and magnetic fields at a certain location if light waves pass by. We can use uh, it to describe density as uh, sounds pass through the, uh, the medium that they're traveling through. So we're going to use uh, basically sinusoidal curves to describe the ways we study in this class. What we have to do is find out a way to turn sine of theta or cosine of theta, again, doesn't really matter which, into something that's a function of t. It doesn't make sense to take the sine of 15 minutes, or the sine of two years, or the sine of a fortnight. We need to have angle as the argument of these functions. So somehow we have to convert time into radians or degrees, and we're going to use radians. So the way you do this is you actually treat the circle as a unit conversion. What I mean by this, if we're trying to turn time into angle, we know the time it takes to go around a circle is the period, and we know the angle it takes to go around the circle is 2 pi or 360 degrees. So 2 pi over period is kind of a unit conversion. If you multiply time by that factor, time in seconds is canceled out by period in seconds, and you're just left by it with like the fraction of your way through the cycle you've gotten. So that gives us basically this as our equation. This term here turns little t time into angle. Notice I've also multiplied by amplitude a. Uh, we know that sine and cosine both vary between 1 and negative 1. So uh, in order to account for various amplitude waves, we have to multiply by the amplitude. What we're left with is a, a function that completely describes that sine wave. It includes the period, the time between uh, successive peaks, uh, or the time for a complete cycle, and it includes the amplitude, um, how large the peaks and valleys are. We also could write this in terms of frequency, since frequency is the inverse of period, and that just transforms the equation into this. So you may see various uh, graphs where they ask you which equation fits this. You probably want to look on whether the graph in question is a sine or a cosine, but fundamentally it doesn't really matter. Um, they're both describing waves with pretty much the same shape and the same periodicity. And um, the vertical axis should match whatever you see as the amplitude on the graph. And whether they're talking about period or frequency, it's kind of contained inside the trig function along with time.